Hello EU4 players, my name's Raymond, and in this video I'm going to explain how to get the Disciples of Enlightenment achievement. The purpose of this guide is to show a method that's easy, reliable, and relatively stress-free. The goal is, starting with Dai Viet, have 10 nations follow the Mahayana faith by 1500. An important note is that the player's nation does not count. This run was completed on patch 1.21. As you might expect, the difficulty mostly comes from the time limit, because 55 years will pass a lot quicker than you'd think. The most common method to getting this achievement involves gallivanting around Southeast Asia, force converting other nations, and making them pop releasable countries like Lan Zhang's northern territories. However, there's an easier way. When you start out, you'll want to do several things before you unpause. First, you'll want to get your country and economy in order. Sell your galleys to the Ming, send a merchant to collect in Canton, delete your forts, collect stuff from the estates, get stability, and take the decisions monastic education and enforce our heritage for more conversion power. Then set your monarch point focus to admin. The goal is to get exploration ideas as quickly as possible, so refrain from spending admin and diplo points if you can. While waiting for this, set Champa as your rival and take the mission to conquer Te Nguyen. Champa is the odd man out in Southeast Asia, being the only Hindu in a sea of Buddhism. As such, he's usually diplomatically isolated. By attacking on December 11th, 1444, you can guarantee he won't have any allies, and given that you're more powerful, you should be easily able to crush him. Destroy his army in his capital, siege it down, and in the peace deal, make him your vassal. Once the war is over, send diplomats to improve relations with him and Lan Zhang. Dai Viet is bounded to the north by the Ming, who will never attack you as long as you pay them, and to the east by the Pacific Ocean. We've just taken care of the south, so the only wildcard remaining is the west with Lan Zhang. Either he'll rival you or set you as friendly, and from my four test runs, it seems to be about 50-50. If he's friendly, send him a royal marriage, which essentially acts as a non-aggression pact. Beware of making an alliance with him though, because you will be called into wars you don't want to be a part of. In both test games I had where he wasn't friendly, it didn't end up mattering because he'll usually be enticed to attack weaker neighbors instead of you. Now it's time to wait until admin 5. In the meantime, build a heavy ship, a light ship, and 5 cogs. It's also worth it to get level 1 admin and diplo advisors, which you should be able to afford if you deleted your forts. Later on, when Champa's relationship with you becomes positive, go to the subject interaction screen and enforce religion to get your first Mahayana country. It should also be noted that your original territory has cores of two nations that you can release as Mahayana vassals, effectively bringing the count to three, although you should hold off on releasing them until the end. Next, as you wait, you'll want to be on the lookout for the nation of Sulu. They don't exist at the start of 1444. Rather, they appear out of nowhere through an event. After 1450, the event has a mean time to happen of 120 months, so be on the lookout and when you see them appear, start making a spy network. You should get Admin 5 sometime around 1457, and hopefully Sulu will have appeared by then. Although if it hasn't, don't panic as you can easily afford to wait for a decade or more with all the leeway time this strategy gives. In 3 of my 4 games, they did appear before 1457 and thus I was ready to go. What you want to do is put a colony in the Philippines in a province that shares a sea zone with them. Then, without waiting for the colony to finish, use your spy network to fabricate a claim. Then you can go to war without losing stability. You can also abandon your colony to save money. Sulu should be a very easy opponent. Take its land and core it. While this is happening, you should use your three light ships to explore the Spice Islands to the southeast. This will reveal a whole bunch of additional OPMs that are ripe for the picking. When the core finishes, you'll have the colonization range to repeat the strategy on six more countries. Build spy networks on Ternate and Tidor, then put a temporary colony in Halmahera, fabricate claims, abandon the colony, and go to war. Do this again in Kenduri against Bhutan, Luwu, and Makassar, and finally do it one last time with a colony in Kalang to fabricate on Ryukyu. The order in which you do these is completely up to you. Just take their land, core it, and convert it to Mahayana. Even with just a single missionary, you'll have more than enough time to do this because of the extra conversion power decisions you took, and the fact that all provinces except Sulu are animist. Now a couple of tips. First, it's worth it to raise the autonomy in provinces you capture. This should prevent rebellions as long as you can get your missionary there not too long after annexation. Next, keep up to date on military tech. You'll outnumber your enemy substantially, but you'll always be getting the minus two from an amphibious landing. If one of the nations somehow manages to get Tech 6 while you're on Tech 4, you could be in for a nasty surprise. You might want to hire a military advisor and switch your point focus if it becomes a problem. On that topic, always take cash from countries you defeat. They'll have tons of it, and it can easily finance a hefty deficit if you want mercs or a good advisor. 
Finally, you'll need the third exploration idea for enough range to get the colony in northern Taiwan to fabricate on Ryukyu. This shouldn't be difficult considering you'll be getting the second idea anyway so you can explore. When you've converted the religion of all the provinces, pause the game and release all countries you can one by one. With Champa, the two releasable tags your territory started with, and the seven island OPMs you just conquered, that gets you to the goal of 10 Mahayana countries. I got there in 1479, two decades before the time limit, and I did so without breaking a sweat. So why do I like this strategy? Well, consistency is the big point. An experienced player could probably expand pretty quickly in Southeast Asia if they put their mind to it, but there's always the possibility of a large alliance block that could bring a temporary halt to conquest. Given the strict time limit, this could lead to an awkward situation. This won't happen if you target the island nations I've listed here because they're diplomatically isolated. Champa won't be able to get help if you attack early, and all the Animus countries won't be able to have external allies firstly because they're the wrong religion, and second because most nations can't even see them. Even if Ayutai won to ally Ternate, it simply would not be able to since Ternate starts in Terra Incognita. This also means it's very easy. You'll outnumber anyone you attack by a huge margin, making things simple and quick. You'll also never run short of resources. Aggressive expansion and overextension won't be an issue here since these are all OPMs, and the wealth of these islands means you'll have more money than you know what to do with. And of course, the biggest resource of time is easily kept in check. Things would have to go catastrophically wrong like Sulu appearing in 1480 for worry to start setting in. This all means that getting the achievement will be relatively stress-free. Additionally, you're in a very good position to go for the Land of the Eastern Jade achievement, where you need to have a single core in the Mexican region. There's no time limit on this one, and you've basically done half the work already. Since you don't actually use the colonists the vast majority of the time, you can have them working on colonies going eastward whenever he's not required as a temporary base to springboard claims from. By getting Diplotech 7 and an advisor, you can make the crucial jump from Hawaii to the Baja Peninsula. My route was Palau, Micronesia, Hawaii, Guaycara, and Totoromes, and I ended up getting the second achievement in 1520. My name's Riemann, and until next time, thanks for watching.